All right, we've got a bit going on this morning, so we've got a bit to get through. So we'll start with the pre-start. I don't know if Mick wants to give us a song first. Mick Jolly, do you want to give us a song first? Song. <laughs> <laughs> Just come past you there, Bob. Oh, mate, come over here. So, yeah, we're heading to 96, where there's been a team of probably eight to ten deal fixers. Yeah, mate, get them. Hey, just going to come in. We've got this uh, crew here. They wouldn't mind catching up with Tanya for a few minutes, please. Yeah, mate, no drivers. So this foundation we started yesterday. It's an amazing thing to see coming together. It's really, really awesome. We're hooking up, these are called the Omega bars, and what they'll do is sit in between the bolts, the uprights on the ring. I just drop them around in place. We've got two different sizes, so kind of spread them out for them. I'd better run down and grab it. I won't be sick. Well, this is the bottom mat, which is the beginning of the process, and now we're setting up the core. And as you can see, this supports the big tower on the top. It's good work full on at the moment, coming to the end of stage one. So yeah, yeah, it keeps us busy though. There's a lot going on. <laughs> you can see the concrete pump there. We are pumping uh, about 110 cubic metres per hour. You can see the guys at the top there, they're vibrating down through the concrete and making sure that the two layers, that they get brought together. Hit the big time, mate. Yeah. Check, check, check. We, um, we've probably been working out here for nine, ten months now, doing all these foundations before the turbines get put on top of the structure. Most things go pretty smoothly. Next stage of construction is backfill. For the backfill process, we've got a 30 tonne excavator getting rid of the rocks. Backfill involves putting the dirt foundation in layers, compacting all the material and building it up to subgrade height. Makes up a lot of the foundation support for the actual turbine. Just basically handing it over to the next team to come in here and put a finished surface on it. So this is the fruits of everyone's labour, I suppose. Ready to go for electrical guys to come in. All of our work is pretty much underground. So, what have you been doing for two years? <laughs> yeah, it's a cracking day. Yeah, my name is Stephen Coles. I'm a site manager for Consolidated Power Projects. We're heading out to see the trenches. They're the ones that for the cable to be installed in. We've got five of them at the moment running around on this farm. We try and establish 20 kilometres a month. At the moment, the guys are actually hitting 30 kilometres a month. Got some good digging. Yeah, this ground's pretty good. In the rock, you just got to slow everything down. Run into quite a bit of rock around here. We're heading out to see our retic team. They've got uh, 184 kilometres of underground cabling to install. Yeah, which like, they are now, so we can hop out and... Well, um, and is it now a good time to... Yep. Yeah, put the, put the yeah, they want to put a GoPro just on there. So we're on the tower to tower crew. One tower there, one tower there. We're connecting the HV cable to that one and that one. And running the cable underground, as you can see there and then backfilling and rehabbing the grounds as well, so it looks like we weren't even here. We were all mates beforehand, so that helps a lot. And we all got the job at the same time. Day in, day out together, yeah, it's fantastic. Plenty of different stuff to do, and hopefully for a greener future, of course.
This is probably the uh, beauty of the wing farm, you know. Beautiful sunrise every morning. Oh, look on that side. And um, we are going the wrong, wrong way. <laughs> I am sorry, Hugo. <laughs> A tower section is typically between 30 to 50 metres long. A blade is about 80 metres. We've got a truck coming in now that's delivering the T6 tower section, also known the top tower section. It will be guided all the way to the high stand. We've got two cranes there. It will be dual lifted, one on either end, offloaded to the designated location on the pad. We'll turn that radio down, <laughs> do all of our safety checks. Um, and then the first lift we had this morning was a T6, which is total weight of about 88 tonne. Good verbal communication between the riggers and the operators we really need. Make sure we do the lift correctly, safely and efficiently. After the offloading is completed, we'll send in what we call the pre-assembly package. Got to really watch the cattle and the sheep, they'll eat anything you leave lying around. My role on this side is to make sure that all the components go up without any damage. These are the towers, as you can see, they're quite large and really echoey. 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 This is a ladder for climbing. Yeah, so there's a little bit of damage here that's caused by transport. It's only a little bit. I'm just going to repair that. Once they're cleaned inside, nothing gets in, they stay clean for a long time. Uh, yeah, today we're doing a T5 and T6 tower section and an SL in lifting those components up. So on pad, we've got BMS, they're all the crane operators, and then we've got a top team and ground team. They've got all their tooling and gear, keep it all structurally sound. Uh, so the job from the start, when we get to pad for main installation, everything should be laid out, set in their radius for the crane. So when we come in, we just do all like the prep work, uh, hook up the rigging gear for the crane, and yeah, then send it up. So today I, I took you out to this wind turbine uh, number 158 here to go on Plains Wind Farm. I'm obviously not Australian, everyone can hear that, I'm German. <laughs> <laughs> this turbine is currently undergoing the process of pre-commissioning, which involves uploading a software to the control system of the turbine to actually tell the turbine what it is, what it's meant to do, get it onto the grid and get the turbine spinning. All the turbines here at the Golden Plain Wind Farm are 149 meters half height. Okay, I'll see you up there. Welcome to the top. We are now on the roof of the Inventors V162 here at the Golden Plains Wind Farm. We are currently roughly at 150 meters above the ground. No matter where I are in the world, it's always the highlight. Get up on the roof, have a look around. And it's, uh, even you think Golden Plains, it's flat, but it's, it's such an incredible view. We're looking from the back towards the front. We have our three blades which are currently in a 90 degrees position, which means we are not ready to harvest the wind. We will turn the blades hydraulically, the turbine would start spinning, and then eventually that will lead to generation and then to grid connection and we supply power into the grid. 
So I think you're gonna see just there, this is gonna be the substation on to our left-hand side. So here we have our cables out in the field where we seen earlier. We plug them into the control room. There you go, all right. Good. This is the Vestas, this is the wind farm server. All the information from the turbines come back to these panels here and then through to the Vestas panel. Everything that makes the wind farm run is, is right here. As you can see in the yard, we've got four huge transformers, a switch gear, our breakers, CTs, isolators, filter banks, stack on. So there's quite a bit here to actually capture and filter the electricity before we send it off to Osnet to put into the grid. Essentially, this side, we act as, I guess, the power point, uh, allowing the wind farm to connect into our terminal station. So we have overhead lines, which will go above us here and then into our rack structure here. This station's required because we need to be able to connect the wind farm to the rest of the network. We're heading to the Cressy terminal station, which is the 500 to 20 kV terminal station. You can see some of the final pieces coming in here. We have over 100 people working on site to try and make the station come together. When you're developing the project, you see things on a piece of paper, but seeing it in the flesh just takes things to another level and helps you to really understand the impact. Power's stepped up here from 220 kV up to 500 kV, and then connects into the 500 kV power line, which sits in the background here. These guys, you know, they've been really good. Really good. You gotta give as good as you get, eh? <laughs> so many different opportunities, different jobs. You, you never know where it's gonna take you. I kind of jumped on the opportunity back in 2017. That's just been fantastic. Best thing about this job is the people. Yeah, true question. <laughs> the work's taking me all across the world, to be honest. No matter where you go in the world, it's always great to make new friends. Thanks, mate. You've always got in the back of your mind, you're doing your bit for the environment. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of satisfaction <laughs> in that. Be part of such a big project, which has such a big impact, it's a good feeling. Renewables is the way to go. But look at that beautiful sunrise we've got. This is my seventh wind farm I've been to. I've lost count of how many wind farms I've done. Uh, yeah, this is my first renewables project and hopefully I'm part of many more to come. Too easy. The only other thing I want to say is for me personally, it's the best job in the world for me. It is probably the most rewarding job I've ever had. And to be a part of something, you know, you think about renewable energy, it, generationally speaking, it's in its infancy. So to be part of a legacy that's going to be left for future generations, couldn't be prouder, could not be prouder. It's good. <laughs> <laughs>